Hello, my name is Kristen Parrish. I'm coming to you from Scottsdale, Arizona, and I'm here to introduce one of the more popular tools in the CII product line, the Project Definition Rating Index, or PDRI. So again, I'm Kristen Parrish. I'm an associate professor in the School of Sustainable Engineering in the Built Environment at Arizona State University. I've helped to develop two of the five PDRIs. Um, I also serve as the academic advisor to the Facilities and Healthcare Committee, and it's through that work that I'm going to be presenting a little bit about the Project Definition Reading Index for Buildings for the benefit of our membership. So what is it that I'm looking to do today? I'm hoping that I can introduce you to the PDRI so you can get to know a little bit about it and also understand how PDRIs are weighted or how we prioritize the elements that comprise the PDRI. So to begin, just a quick note again about CII's mission and vision. So obviously the Construction Industry Institute is uh, the host of the Facilities and Healthcare Sector or Facilities and Healthcare Committee, which I serve as the academic advisor to. And I wanted to note that CII overall attempts to provide a research and development platform to create and drive innovative solutions that tangibly improve business outcomes through an academically based and disciplined approach. This is part of how PDRIs are developed. It is also uh, what drives our research agenda within the Facilities and Healthcare Committee. So many of you that have done these sorts of work or these sorts of projects before are familiar with a general project systems layout where we have industrial projects, we treat these as nodes, and building projects, we also treat these as nodes, and these are connected via infrastructure projects. Uh, these could be for transportation, transmission, distribution, or collection of people, goods, fluids, or energy. This is obviously an integrated system um, and the PDRIs are actually designed with that in mind. So looking briefly at how the PDRIs connect together, it's very similar to that project system slide previously, just illustrating how we have industrial projects, building projects, and infrastructure projects. And these red, green, and blue boxes outline the types of PDRIs that we have. So to date, we have a small and large industrial projects PDRI, we have a small and large projects PDRI, and we have a large buildings PDRI. So for those of you unfamiliar, I'm gonna first walk through a little front end planning in general. So you're probably familiar with this cost influence curve, pretty standard in the construction industry, but really what this illustrates is that earlier on in a project cycle, you have a pretty low cost associated with making changes. So you have a major ability to influence a project for fairly minimal cost. As we move through design and construction, it becomes quite costly to make change um, and your influence and your ability to change is quite small. So front end planning was originally conceptualized as part of a gated process. So you go from feasibility studies through a state into concept, through another stage gate, into detailed scoping, through a final stage gate, and then into design and construction. What we found in recent research is that more and more projects are being fast-tracked or compressed. So feasibility concept and detailed are fairly overlapping. Um, and then some of these scoping exercises we also Will overlap with design procurement and construction. So front end planning really is, is all the way through till the end of detailed scope, regardless of what that comprises. DII has a, a set of tools to help with planning, and one of the most popular sets of these is project definition rating index or PRI tools. So again, industrial, small industrial infrastructure, small infrastructure, and building projects all have this PDRI tool available to them. And what we found over about 30 years of research at CII is that the more effort you spend in planning, generally as a percentage of budget, the better off you're going to be in terms of your project performance. And that's both in terms of cost and schedule. So cost is both via cost growth and lower cost variance, as well as a reduced number of change orders. And then for schedule, of course, we're looking at flip. So what is PRI? Well, it's an acronym. It stands for the Project Definition Rating Index, or PDRI. It is an index. So this means we are scoring along a continuum, uh, and that continuum runs the level of scope definition. 
with 70, the lowest possible score being best and 1,000, the highest possible score being worth. So it's a risk management tool. The idea of PDRI is to provide a structured, comprehensive checklist that identifies and measures risks related to project scope definition. How are these tools organized? We're really only going to look at the building project PDRI for this case because in the FHC, that's most of what people are doing. So what we have found is that we have listed the critical elements that need to be included in a scope definition for building projects. So this comprises three separate sections, the basis of project decision, the basis of project design, and the execution approach. 11 categories, which you'll see detailed in future slides, and 64 elements. This comprises 37 pages of detailed element descriptions, and you rate these elements to obtain project score. Again, as I mentioned previously, this could be as high as 1,000, and the lower the score, the better. So just to give an example of what a score sheet would look like, this is section one, basis of project decision. This is what the scoring would be for a building project. So you can see you have the section listed here. You have the categories broken out. In this case, it's A, B, and C. And then within each of these categories, you have a set of elements. And every single element is its own weights. And so what you'll see here, I just want to draw your attention to the weights. If it's not applicable, it has a weight of zero, so it doesn't count towards your project score at all if the element truly is unapplicable. And then if you have a really clear definition for that particular element, you're able to give it a score one or a definition level one. Usually that scores a one or a two. Then if you are really unclear about the, the definition for the element, that's going to be in the, in the five column and that will give you a much higher weight. And I mentioned to this because it's actually the highest rated element in the entire PDRI. Um, so we're going to dive a little deeper and look at that. So this is what an element description would look like. And as I mentioned, we're going to go first through building, building use requirement. This is element A1 and section A. I'm sorry, within category A, section one. So this identifies building uses or functions. They include uses such as, I'm not gonna read you the entire list. And then you'll also see a description of other options, which could also mean the need should be defined. As an example, renovating your existing space rather than building space considered. A listing of current facility that will be vacated due to the new project should be produced. Specifically note any changes to building use if the project is a renovation or revamp. So the idea here would be that as you look at this point, you think, okay, how clear am I about this? And that's gonna result in us giving it a score or a weight. So a lot of people are curious about how exactly we develop this because if you look, they might seem a little arbitrary. So the way that we did it, we leveraged all of you. We leveraged people in industry. The research team, that was research team 155, identified the C4 risk issues, grouped them into 11 categories in three sections, but they were aware that all of these were equally important. So they worked with industry to prioritize or weight those issues according to their relative importance. This was based on from experienced project managers and project development subject experts that helped to determine how important each element was in relation to each other. Then they see the PDRI on real projects to validity, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So when, you, when a practitioner decided, I'm going to contribute to this research effort, I'm going to help dating, what they have just determined was they would take a project that they had recently completed, and they would evaluate the level of definition element in the PDRI and apply a contingency to that. So that contingency would be that element individual impact on total installed cost and they would state that as a percentage of the overall estimate so they would do this at a point in time go back in their mind to think about right before detailed design is going to begin if i was if i had complete definition for element contingency would i apply or assign that and if i had in or poor definition at a point just detailed design and construction how much contingency would i apply they would list both of those, and that would provide anchor points for the research team to determine how important was element A1, for instance, in relation to element A2, A3, A4, et cetera. 
So these levels of definition are obviously critical in this process. Therefore, it's important to understand exactly the guidance that we provide to people. So what we would say is a level one or definition level one means you have complete definition. There's no further work required. You could also have some deficiencies. So more work would be required prior to phase gate three, which is that phase gate right before detailed design and construction that we looked at earlier. Or you might have an incomplete or poor definition. You know almost about this element. And that would be, of course, definition level five. So recognizing be new to some of you, I'd be aware that that may mean that you don't have time or have ability to run 64 elements right at the very beginning. So if you had less time and you just wanted to start with your building project and think about planning, but maybe not fully commit to the PDRI, or one of the bugs the II to create a small projects of the PDRI projects, what you might want to do is start with these 10 most important. These are the most important because they have the highest weights. And you can see that they comprise 275 out of 1,000. So it's rough 30% of the total weight for this tool is locked 10 elements. And so I'm not going to go through each of these, but you can see that uh, A, which we've already looked at quite a bit, is the most critical <clears throat> with architectural design uh, being tied with future expansion considerations as sort of the top, the 10th most, right? in this case, eighth most important element. And I'll just leave you with this because it's one of my favorite comics. So people say, hey, let's go around the table and update on our projects. And this person says, my project is a static series of play plan near random acts. My life is a tragedy of emotional desperation. And many of you that manage projects have probably felt this way before. And you've probably had someone to say to, say to you, as they say in this last part of the comic, it's more or less customary to say things are going fine. But if you would like to avoid a life that is a tragedy of emotional desperation, I hope that you'll consider looking at the PDRI. Thanks and have a great day.